Well, we got our metal here now for our uh, trailer chassis. So now we got to get this um, organized and you know, kind of dry fit into the shape that I want. So let's get this laid out and then just start to kind of get an idea of how we're going to get this, um, you know, fit into place so that we can get it welded. <laughs> Okay, so now I have some idea of how much uh, space this is going to take up in the garage. There's a couple things we've got to do before we get it fully uh, clamped up and everything. Number one, we have to cut some 45 degree angles in the uh, ends of each one of those pieces so that the frame can kind of butt up together. And number two, right now it's oriented so that it's faced up. We're going to have to kind of flip it um, just by rotating a few of the beams and whatnot. Uh, to orient it so it's face down because we want to build this upside down first so we get the axle on and all that get a dry fit and then um, you know get it welded but we're going to weld everything that's on the bottom first flip it then weld everything that's on the top okay now in order to get this piece of steel cut at a 45 degree angle what I'm going to try to do is get a new blade for this um, my chop saw here so this blade on here right now it's a wood blade, obviously. Now you can take these off, and I believe you can change them out for a, uh, it's called an abrasive blade, which is meant to cut steel. Cold out. Hmm. I guess this is the thing about building a uh, trailer for winter in an unheated garage. <laughs> See, I wouldn't come up with this idea in the summer, huh? Right, we got the got the 10 inch it's called a metal cutoff blade. Now this saw is not exactly meant for cutting metal. So um, I was doing a little bit of reading online and it seems like it's it, it should be fine. Uh, the one thing we're gonna have to do is be really light when we're pressing down on the wood and um, maybe give it you know a bit of time to cool off in between uh, some cuts. Okay, so now I got this all ready to go, blades in place. Um, I think we're, uh, we're ready to get this thing cut. And I got myself some eye protection, so I'm all set. All right, so for you guys, I'm just gonna skip ahead to the part where I get this thing cut, because this is taking forever. Okay, so verdict on this, uh, this blade that we got on here is no good. So this, uh, oh, it's still a little warm. The um, the cut that it made, you know, you can see it, it it's doing a good job. Like it's it's making a nice straight cut, which is what I wanted, which I was hoping to get from something like this. It's a lot wider than what we need, right? We only need a very thin cut through this, and it's heating up the metal a lot, which we knew to expect. Um, there's some potential that it could be heating up. You know the actual saw and the the motor, since the, the motor is not really designed for metal cutting, and there's a lot of extra friction and heat and whatever going on here. Uh, so this wasn't really working out great. So I said, okay, let me try my trusty Dremel, which you know I've used on various other metal cutting things, but it's just so small. I figured, you know, something bigger would do the job a lot better. After about a minute or less, I'm already through. So yeah, I went out to the store and got those things for nothing. Oh well. Uh, it was only about six bucks, so no big deal. So I'm gonna finish this off with the Dremel and just be extremely careful to have very, you know, straight lines and um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it comes out looking good. We'll see. <laughs> Alrighty, well, that was a heck of a lot easier than the big uh, saw over there. 
Let's see how well we did. So as far as a straight edge, looks like we did okay, reasonably. I think the weld will fill any of those gaps. And as far as cutting out a 45, looks like we did pretty good there as well. So yeah, that went a lot better. So I'm going to do the rest of the cuts um, the same way on these guys. And then we should be able to start getting this squared up and leveled off and all that and uh, maybe tack it up. Um, this has taken me quite a while to get these cut, so I might only even get this all squared off and level and everything and maybe tacked today. And then I'll pick up the rest of it tomorrow. Do you miss me at all? Do you think about the things we used to do? No, you couldn't stand tall So why didn't you, why didn't you call? Alright, well we got everything all cut up now, all the 45s So now we're just going to lay it out and uh, just take a look at it Make sure everything looks good, no, no big gaps Alright, so this is just loosely squared And you can see it's pretty much meeting up as it should on the corners There's a little bit of a gap on the back walls all right, well, I think that's it for tonight. Uh, I'm getting pretty chilly. It's it's, uh, it's got to be below freezing right now, and it's time for dinner, so see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning. So I did a little research last night on uh, gaps in the metal when you're doing welding. It seems like there's, there's some sort of notion where there's uh, some fraction of the thickness of the metal you're trying to weld is as big as a gap can be. So, for example, with this, we have... Um, this is 3 16 inch uh, thickness metal. So let's say 25% of that would be the allowable width in, in the gap. These gaps here are definitely too big. I mean, you can see that gap there is, you know, it's, it's just a significant percentage of the width of that metal. And I'd like to have a much better weld than that given this thing is going to be dragging around our whole trailer. So to correct that, I think it's going to be relatively straightforward. I'm just going to grind down. It looks like there's one little spot there that's kind of keeping them from pressing up. I'll grind that down a little bit with the Dremel. And I might need to go get some more heads, unfortunately. Okay, so now you can see that gap got a lot smaller. tools that I have at the moment. Um, I got this in place just to see that uh, you know the span is correct. So the current task I have ahead of me is to get the frame perfectly square and perfectly not level with the earth but level relative to itself. this thing square and level with itself it's time to tack it up which is just to put a tiny little bit of a weld in each corner just to hold it all still and then we can get some full welds on to just make this all one solid piece I'll take off the clamps and then I can you know get all the seams that are being covered by the blocks Alright, so now that I got the four corners done, one I forgot to turn the camera around for, uh, now it's time to get 
one full weld. And uh, yeah, then we'll have a giant metal rectangle. I got it all welded up, at least enough to say that it's a rectangle now, and it's, you know, it's all one piece. Well, I think we're gonna call it a night and uh, get some dinner and get this guy to walk. Um, I think today, the stuff we did today was by far, I think, one of the slower parts of this, because, you know, there was a lot of just, like, making sure it was square and level and all that, and being real careful and nervous about messing it up. So, um, yeah, now that this part's done, I think the rest of the, the trailer, the chassis part, is going to go pretty quick. Uh, at least, you know, it's going to look like there's progress happening a lot faster. And uh, the one thing that's going to be maybe a little challenging is the tongue. Leaving that, I don't think it's going to be too, too bad. Um, it's going to be more of the same. And there's one simple measurement we need to make in order to make sure that it's centered, and that's going to be pretty easy to do. So yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow morning, and uh, then we're gonna get this thing starting to move along a little faster, which will be great. Now that we've got the exterior frame of the trailer all set, it's time to start dealing with the cross pieces. Now there's there's two bars that I know exactly where they're gonna go. One is gonna be um, 16 inches from the front, the other one's gonna be, I think it's one foot seven inches from the back. And those two bars, they're, you know, where they're gonna be um, because they don't really interfere with anything. The remaining three bars, at least two of them, are gonna be around the axle. So I need to get the axle in a position. The axle needs to be 60% back from the front of the, of the rectangle. I'm super thrilled with these welds. It feels like it's a lot pittier than it was yesterday, and I'm not sure why. I'm gonna try looking that up. I know if you um, if you change the voltage around, it can help with that. So I'm gonna see if maybe a higher or lower voltage might uh, improve for the next one. Fortunately, I mean, with, I got you know welds on three sides of these joints, and this is not a um, you know, a critical piece. It's it's just to help support the structure. So uh, I think this is fine for this particular piece of the trailer. But when I get along to like doing the axles, like I want that weld to be better. So um, I'm just going to double check those settings. Try to get it better for the next one, and uh, see what we can do. And this worked a lot better. It was a problem with the voltage, because. These joints, after, after correcting the voltage, are just significantly better. So I'm happy with that. Now I feel a lot more comfortable about doing the welds for the axle, because those need to be really good welds. So now I know where the voltage needs to be set, and I have my technique down. So I want to make sure we get those things uh, on today, to make sure I'm preserving my technique through the day, and not starting over from scratch tomorrow. So let's get that done. <laughs> All right, now we got our axle and the, uh, the spring loosely attached. If you want to see a good video on how to do this, I'm linking to it to the, in the description below. It's that same trailer uh, video series that I, I linked to in my previous videos. He does a really great job in explaining exactly you know, how to do this kind of stuff. So I'm not going to uh, go over the exact details and show you how to do this. 
refer to that one. It's a really great video. Go watch it. So now that we got our axle kind of loosely fitted onto the springs, uh, now we're going to get it into place on the uh, on the frame and make sure we have our, let's call these anchors and whatnot, make sure we have them in exactly the right spot, get them tacked down and then complete the whole uh, assembly. That is that. The axle is attached. This trailer is almost done. We just got a few more cross pieces to put in, and then we got to tackle the tongue, which is going to be, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. But for the most part, you know, we've 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 conquered a lot of the difficult stuff. Now I'm just going to get a few more cross pieces in, which I, I'm not going to bother, uh, you know, showing you the process of that. It's the same as the rest. But uh, yeah, I'm super psyched about this. It's going well. I'm getting better at welding, which is great. I think this episode might be getting a bit long at this point, so I think I'll, I may leave you now. And uh, that means that the next episode, we'll get the tongue on, and then we'll probably start worrying about getting this thing rust-proofed, waterproofed, all that kind of thing, so that we can then um, you know, get, start getting the wood part on. If you have any suggestions about you know, maybe things that you feel like you would have done differently, um, you know, let me know down in the comments. If you enjoy this build series, please subscribe. It helps tell us that you know you enjoy this content and we should maybe do, be doing a little bit more of this. Uh, if you have suggestions of what you'd like to see change, let us know. So I'll catch up with you on the next one. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.